So, I mean, it's leading to a... a, a before, I, don't, I just want to kind of flag this up, that, you know, we're going to end the conversation on why filmmakers should self-distribute into mm. a, a small ghettoized yeah. audience. But before we get into that, if, say, somebody had that film that really did have a possibility um, of, of breaking out, how would they get you attached, or, or another British distributor, how would they attract you? Uh, the best thing, a, a very good example, is uh, London to Brighton, which um, I knew about before it was made because they came on a, uh, an event I run every year at Edinburgh called Meet the Experts, and the producer came and pitched it not very well. Uh, and I didn't think it, it would work. And then they made it, and it was such... There was a buzz about it, and it was a kind of gangster film, and at that time gangster films were kind of dead in the water. I mean, I'd released a few, and... You know, the critics said, for God's sake, not another gangster film, please, nobody make any for more. And essentially, that's what London to Brighton was. But it was done in such a way that it got people talking about it. It was an unusual story within that, an unusual way of telling it. So they'd got the buzz. So by the time I'd seen it, I knew three other distributors were interested. And at that stage, there were seven distributors all wanting the film. So right. that's the ideal position that... Uh, everybody's, you know, bidding for it. Right, and what is the process that would happen in terms of literally ABC in order to go through a deal? Um, in, in, in brief. In what respect? Well, the, the, you, you'd see the film, there'd be an offer made. Yes, there's an offer um, made. Contracts uh, uh, and... The ideal thing is, uh, you know, I would offer £10,000 advance against UK based on an, a, a number of different permutations. Somebody else would say, I like this, I'm offering 25000 And they would offer maybe better terms. Then somebody else would come in with a greater offer. Often the money up front is not particularly... Uh, it depends. It's not. It can be more attractive. For instance, on a number of films that I've done, I've taken no fee at all for releasing it in the cinema. And I used to be the only person giving a 50-50 deal on DVD, uh, which I know since a number of other distributors have uh, offered that. The, the old terms used to be you got 10, 12 and a half, maybe 15% of the net wholesale price of that DVD. So if a film was selling in the shops at 12.99 and Woolworths were buying it at six quid, you may only be getting 60p. So that sort of deal, that 60p is going against the advance you've got. That may not be as good as, as say, doing the 50-50 ideal I would do. Where you um, may not where, get an where advance. Where you, you don't get an advance. Oh, well, you still get an advance, but your share of that is like £2.50. Right. So it depends on, you know, a lot of people go for the money because often they don't see anything, they don't see any overages, as we call them, and often they're so broke that they need that money. They need as much money as they can get up front. Right. Every deal is different. Every distributor has, has different terms. Right. Just talk me through a typical, um, you know, what happens at the box office in, in a cinema, because I think there's a, a preconception that, you know, if, if, if I buy a ticket for a movie, there's a chunk of that makes its way to the filmmaker, which clearly it kind of does, but, but what is broadly the, the percentage breakdowns? Because I found okay. that quite surprising. The, you, the, one pound is, is taken at the cinema for you to see that film. 17.5%, this is in the UK, every country varies. But in the United Kingdom, 17.5% goes in VAT to the government to pay for all these banks we've bought. So you're left with 82.5 pence. The... Cinema, the exhibitor, is going to take, depending on which exhibitor is, they're either going to take 75% of that, maybe 70%, 65% is probably the lowest you'll get. So they're taking the bulk of it. What is left, which is roughly 21% of the gross price paid, is going to the distributor, and that is paying for, first of all, um, their fee all the money it's spent putting in. Advertising in the United Kingdom is higher than any other country in the world. So you're paying for all those marketing costs, you're paying for the print, you're paying for moving it there. It's cost you £23 to get the print to that cinema. It's going towards that. Um, then when... So the distributor theoretically takes their fee off first. What's left pays off their expenses. When the expenses are paid, what's left pays for the uh, advance. 
then what's left theoretically goes to the filmmaker. However, you're then moving into video on demand. There's costs related to that, advertising costs, promotional costs. There's then the DVD authoring. So all the time there's money coming off at each different... So sometimes you do get... I mean, I've, I've seen films where I do consultancy for people um, and I've seen films that have grossed literally millions of pounds and the money uh, that's been taken off has resulted in no money going back to the filmmaker. And sometimes... Um, you know, that's legitimate. Those costs are there. Sometimes distributors take the piss. Mm. You know, I saw one uh, report I went through and the distributor was saying that each print they paid for cost £2,200. Now, I'm getting my prints at £550. This was a major studio. They weren't paying that money. Mm. They were paying even less than I was paying. So, you know, um, right. You have and, to sort of and be very careful <coughs> on the deal you do. You need you need a professional to do the deal for you. You you, you know, um, particularly if there's large sums of money involved, you need a lawyer you, or your sales agent. Your sales agent will will know, mm. you know, all the kind of mm. tricks. And, and of course, there is a myth, isn't there, that that somehow sales agents and distributors are are kind of there to service the film. That somehow maybe you're even an investor in the film when in fact you're running your own separate business. Uh, yes, but by the same token, I mean, you know, I run a, an extremely small company and um, a number of my films have never recouped at all. Um, but when they do recoup, I'm very keen to pay very quickly. And people, yeah. you know, I have to ring them up saying, please put me an invoice in. Yeah. Because, you know, all, all distributors, all need, sales agents need reputations. And you can always ask 10 people they've worked with and you'll get an idea of how good they are at paying, how prompt they are at paying, how effective they are. Right. So, yes, I mean, we are running you know, separate businesses, uh, and everybody does that, whether it's a, a camera hire company. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're all ultimately going for the same goal, and that is to make success, financially successful films. Right.